So the next question is, where do I have to go from here? Now that my PDT has been removed... Uh, not this way, apparently. Although I find it a little weird. Because I can't go this way, so... It must be the other way. I'm not sure which way I should take otherwise. Oh, the elevator, huh? Okay. Um, okay. So down we go, I think. There's blood in the elevator as well. A biological quarantine has been initiated. Wounded as he is. Level two. Kitchen knife and snowflake are off limits. And he is descending to level four. Level three. Hydroponics is off limits. Okay, so we're here, and the place is infested by plants. It looks more like grocery, actually. Um, a lot of flora in here. And I wonder if this blood is coming from John? In the elevator? The vines may attempt to redecorate the elevator before too long. Uh, what items do I still have? The empty pistol and John's personal data tag. Uh, there are vines covering the elevator shaft. The elevator shaft, now covered in a thick band of foliage, looms over the room like a giant forest mushroom. Uh, what else? There's overgrowth over here. The corpse belonging to Edwin Chiang, a civilian. And uh, what was he doing here? And uh, we can go this way. And uh, there's a way over here. There are fans, although the fans were installed to keep the air cycling, they're now helping reduce the buildup of vegetation. Um. Oh wait, the creeping growth on this level has upholstered the drab surfaces in an almost comforting fabric of green. And I can go this way. This doorway's bright lightning indicates the entrance to another laboratory. Um, so there are three ways I can go. Let's go up north first. Uh, this is ridiculous. How did it grow this world in a few months? I'm not sure. These plants can naturally develop this fast. Kane developed the technology to accelerate plant growth. Oxygen. So there must be a lot of it in here. Um, uh, maybe you can see the plants grow before his eyes. So here we have spinning fans. The air is filled with a distinctive jungle scent. How does that smell? Plants are producing odors that are sweet, creamy and seductive in equal measure. Surprisingly pleasant aroma of the undergrowth is kept in check by the hard-working fans. Overgrowth unattended for months, the vegetation is wickedly dense and as strong as twisted steel cables. Here we have a vaporizer bed. This is an, this is an F evaluation platform for specimens and samples to be inserted into the glass chambers. Can I use it? No. And here we have a broken vaporizer. The vaporizer lies broken beyond repair, wrapped in vines. Another one wrestled from their upright position. The vaporization chambers are now wrestling, resting idly on the floor. A network of green veins snake across every surface. The vines have covered many of the laboratory surfaces. In some areas the wall and floor can be seen behind the tangled weave. Uh, what is this? Static field monitor? Another monitor displaying the vessel's favorite show, Static. And the metal plate, a 
Polish metal plague is engraved with the slogan Garning, just another day at the plant. Here we have a computer terminal. And a desk, a small work desk. A locked door, this door appears to be locked, yep. And here we have a corpse from Keita Yamada, civilian liaison. There must be more of one though. Let's try to open the door. Another locked door. Can't seem to open it. Um, so there are two terminals. Let's pick up the plague. Metal plague, can we combine it with something? No, that's ridiculous. Mm. No. Dr. Sebastian Gray. January 2, finally. We have more room for the Lincessi Harvey strain, which I've been working on so hard. It's days like this that humanity truly proves why it crawled out of the ocean before any other. My section has been expanded. I have more staff, true, but they are drones and have little other function. Now we can expand the research potential of Project Kitchen Knife and see what else the plants can yield. The oxygen production rate is quite unlike anything in my initial projections could have predicted. Last year it became the worst kept secret on the Groom Lake and all of a sudden I had more interns than I could comfortably employ. Their only function is to stumble about the place and ask troublesome questions that I have little time to answer. If only your world was more like that of insects. I have plenty of workers and drones, but none of the unwavering loyalty. Bees work and work, the faith in their queen unquestioning and constant. That kind of loyalty is beyond price. These interns of mine have their uses, I suppose. We always need volunteers willing to get close to the queen. Oh, those are updates are getting longer and longer. Look at this. Uh, I am surrounded by incompetence. One of the imbecilic interns got too close to the queen and she showed him her affection. Quite amusing though, not him, not to him. This means that I must attend another accident debriefing with the board, though. Dr. Milan does love to test me. I see him up on the hearing bench and he grins at me in that supercilious look that he has perfected over the years. I suppose that I have him to thank for my current position. It was his recommendation to the board that made him hire me in the first place. Still, I believe he has come to enjoy these little power plays. He does so like to keep me under his heel that my dear doctor is only a temporary situation. Once this project is complete, the chess games that we play so often will no longer be our only battleground. Regarding the project, some of the bugs' eggs failed to hatch properly. I suspect this is why the Queen was more aggressive than unusual. There are more than enough drones to continue the collection work. Their unique chemical properties are doing wonders for the plants, although I'm running short of interns prepared to work in close proximity to them since the last incident. The worker I appreciate the most is Akiza. I was astonished to discover that she is related to the legendary Dr. Tenchu of the Eugenics Wars. I did consider mentioning it to her, but I sense she is oddly ashamed to have him as her ancestor. If it wasn't for me like him, men like him, our profession would be a hollow shell of what it is now. Then again, if it wasn't for him, genetic research wouldn't have been put back by several generations, now would it? The ethical quandaries we face as men of science. Then June, the insects are restless, they rumble in their apiaries and are more aggressive than usual. My personal deduction is that the presence of the marine thugs aboard the ship are the cause. Armed guards all over the place. I was stopped by one, on one the other day and asked my reasons for going into hydroponics. Well, after explaining I was head of the dam project, I had the guard removed from his post and then the ship. This is insanity. How am I expected to progress with these thugs around? September 23, I recall complaining about the inundation of interns. If only they were still here now, both Ivan and Theodore disappeared from their rooms last night and I've had to speak to security about their whereabouts. They were Akiza's assistants and now the production of the Queen's Royal Jelly has slowed exponentially. That's been a huge blow, but a rather extraordinary anomaly has appeared in our growth pods. A high third o undiscovered strain of fungus. Its origin is something of a mystery to me. These fungal growths fascinate. At first I thought it was a common garden variety mold, but after a substantial analysis performed by Akita, it seems to harbor neuron activity. That is to say, it seems to exhibit rudimentary signs of intelligence. 
We certainly created some unusual species on this deck, but the idea of a quasi-intelligent fungus growing and evolving of its own volition is exciting and frankly frightening. I've asked Akiza and the remnants of her team to cultivate it, but exhibit caution in where it is spread. So this is the cause of the infection. October 24, I was asked by one of Dr. Milan's assistants if the fungal substance discovered growing in the bowels of the ship had anything to do with us. I lied, of course, but this is becoming alarming. Our experiments flourished at first, we may have lost more staff recently, but our experiments have been very fruitful indeed. Confidentially, the properties of the fungus is both extraordinary and terrifying. It has the remarkable ability to take control of a living subject's central nervous system and hypothalamus, as observed in the monkey we used for testing. The monkey shrieked and thrashed in rage for the first few days after it was exposed, and then it became quiet, observant, and uncannily intelligent. It's certainly aggressive, but then again, which viruses aren't? And the last one, finally, December 1. No, 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 we've officially lost control of the deck. Eden now truly belongs to the beasts. We've seen strange things. I watched as the fungus took control of the deck as it spread through the staff, and much to my shame, I watched their deaths and examined their bodies. Nobody can cross the paths because the bugs are so aggressive that when Solomon went through in a red suit, they ripped it from his body and stung him to death. It took mere moments, still I live in the hope that the insects will remember me, their creator, and perhaps see me as one of their own. And there are some emails. Uh, one from Dr. Tenchu over my family. Dr. Gray, I do not wish to seem unprofessional or impolite, but I would ask that you not press me on the subject of my ancestry any further. I was nearly refused entry to medical school on the basis of my family's background, and the torment I suffered at the hands of my school peers regarding my great-great-uncle was unbearable. I am fully aware of his actions, and I've seen countless photographs and documents of the consequences of his work. I took his position to change our world for the better, not to be reminded of the skeletons in my family's closet. I've enjoyed our working relationship thus far, Dr. Gray, but I'd prefer my family history no longer be a topic of our conversations. Thank you for understanding, Akiza. I thought he didn't mention it, but I guess he did. Then from Dr. F. Wei about the meal. Dr. Gray, I enjoyed our meal yesterday. It was refreshing to hear a man so outspoken on this ship. I appreciate your candor and do, and do agree that perhaps it's time the board was shaken up a little. Although this is merely an observation rather than an action plan, I think the top leadership needs some new blood. I'd second you if you decided to take on the challenge yourself. Your impeccable scientific pedigree more than qualifies you. By the way, did you know where they were keeping that new cargo? It seems rather like a waste of resources if they won't even tell us where it is. Regards, Dr. F. Wei. There was a lot of info about the doctor. Uh, anything on the other terminal? It's the vaporizer. Um, let's give a report. The vaporizer, the perfected MK5 model of the Kane Corporation Transstation. Using advanced and unique molecularization technology, the vaporizer has the ability to shift a targeted substance between gas, liquid and solid states without any of the structural breakdown seen in objects shifting between states on a regular basis. The MK5 is the latest model, but it hasn't yet been rolled into mass production because of the current difficulty fueling the vaporizer with resources on board the Groom Lake. Recent experiments undertaken were more than satisfactory, and it passed the cane safety and security test with no adverse effects causing harm to the user observed. It has been graded level 4 because of the specific nature of its technology and the limited quantity of existing vaporizers. During an experiment recently carried out in the royal jelly produced by hydroponics, Dr. Gray and another observer commanded, commented on the remarkable speed at which the jelly was transferred into gas, thus placating their insect population. And there are some codes over here. Can I press them? No, I can't seem to do anything with it. Uh, let's try to activate it. Vaporizer chamber compromised. Chamber is not airtight. I guess this uh, is because of the cracked glass. This vaporizer has been punctured by a hole, leaving a spider web of cracks in the glass. Can I somehow fix it? Maybe with a plaque? I can try to make it fit, but it may break. I guess not. 
Uh, let's try other stuff. No, that won't work. You never know in this game. It doesn't work like that. Or in any adventure game, you have to try really things that you think are not the solution, but then they are. Uh, so I guess I'm done here in this room for now. Let's check uh, this one. Oh, that's crazy. What is that? Giant ant wasp thingy? That's gross. Makes me think of the movie, uh, the movie June. But what does it do? It smiled. It's happy? Okay, there's overgrowth here as well. The overgrown vines are no less dense in this room. Hardened amber. Amber trickles from the tree, but most of it has hardened into an incredibly tough com compound. Uh, a tree, a, call, a tall, strangely shaped tree, grows out of a housing space in the floor. Milk from the creature is being fed into the tree by a pair of tubes. Ugh. It's blowing out some kind of gas. Milk cables. The tree has been pierced in various spots by Chase, by these two tubes. As you watch, the milk travels sluggishly through them and into the tree. So what does it do? Milk collection tank. These tanks exist to collect what is what is being milked from the brute. Kind of feel sorry for this thing, whatever it is. Uh, here we have a computer terminal. The vines seem to be trying to pluck this terminal out of its wall socket. So far, they have not succeeded. Milk processor. This receptacle stores the processed milk. And here we have the milking suction cups. Semi-organic suction cups were custom designed to harvest this creature's excretions. Ugh. The thing itself is a large swollen milk sack. <laughs> a mottled abdomen, swollen egg sack or plum milk gland. Possibly all three. Restrained harness. The series of struts holds the grotesque creature in place. And it's a queen insect. It's difficult to grasp the size and form of its, this insect creature. Other like protuberances sprout from its bulbous abdomen while the pincers stab the air. Uh, I'm afraid to go near it. Let's try to work the terminal. Hydroponics. Hydroponics queen chamber. Um, Queen's life cycle week 93. Monday, healthy, docile, responsive to stimuli, milking as normal. Tuesday, no activity. Wednesday, healthy, heightened aggression, recommended milking with only experienced staff. Thursday, no activity. Friday, healthy, highly aggressive, three personnel wounded in milking. Saturday, healthy, quiet, unusual brooding behavior, milking normal. Sunday, healthy, aggressive, one fatality via venom pouches. Ugh. Uh, what about the reports? Oh, that's it. Uh, let's activate the suction pumps. I don't think he likes that. So now we have a milk collection pad. This receptacle stores the processed milk. Can you pick it up? Now we have Queen's milk. This isn't gonna work. Hmm. Maybe. Can't combine it with anything no. yet. Uh, there's also the Akiza Tenshu personal logs. So let's read them. 